content mm -hmm. is king and queen. It doesn't matter what the medium is. How we listen to the music mm -hmm. or how we watch the TV doesn't matter. Right, mm -hmm. right. Let's keep creating conversation-worthy content mm -hmm. that people want to see. I'm home court, you standing trial. What's up, world? It's your boy, Big Court of the Holding Court Podcast, man. And we here for another one. What's up? We got my oldest daughter, Rachel Renee. What's going on? It's a good day. It's a good day? Yes. I know. We, we've been on one. It's been hectic, but yes. we've been making it happen. We started off strong. We did. We did. <laughs> we started out strong, man. Hey, so today, we ain't got producer Ken. Well, he might be in and out. You know, producer Ken let his hair grow, y'all. Um, so, <laughs> see the what hair? Up, what up, what up? This is the first time. I've been knowing this dude 20 years. i never seen his hair. This is the first time he let his hair grow. You right, right, right. <laughs> Hello to the beautiful Miss Jasmine Lewis who just popped up and bombed the set. But anyway, um, we switching up the format a little bit today. Um, we've had a few bosses on the show. Um, you know, we we had a few. Of, we had Jay Prince. We had Master mm -hmm. P. Ice T. A few bosses, but we got a real big dog. Big boss. Big boss. boss. The big guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and you know, you guys may not know his face, but you definitely know his work. You definitely know the things that his fingerprints have been on. Uh, we have the general manager of the AMC brands, All Black and We TV. Yes, yes. The GM, yes. big boss, Brett Dismute. Pleasure, pleasure. What's going Thank on, brother? For having me. Yeah, appreciate you coming, man. Man, listen, been a long time coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, so I just, I mean, you just let me know that you were actually a fan of the show. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. I watch, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, I get the nuggets and I see what people talking about, you know. <laughs> and, uh, it's funny. Uh, I saw, uh, cra so I, I just moved a few months back. Before I moved, uh, living on the same block is crazy. Okay. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I saw that. I saw that. And, and um, I was like, you know. I can't, I can't uh, come on holding court like too corporate, you know. What <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? yeah, yeah, like, right. You know what I'm saying? We're not, we're not doing the, the button see, up and the blazer today. But that's funny though, because here you see me, right? I was like, with well, the big boss is coming yeah. in, not me. Let me not dress so hood, <laughs> right? Hey, well, I was saying, I was like, you I know, know, you know, got all fashion you know, forward, you know, you know, guns out, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo. yeah, because yeah. yeah. you know, normally I have yeah. on yeah. some some low key, almost gang attire, but <laughs> but nah, yes. I appreciate you coming and and stopping your schedule because I know you know you got a whole conglomerate to to oh, look man. over um but I want to start from the beginning a little bit yeah. so Chi Town yes born and raised yes the rack did y'all yeah. call it the rack no we did day? not okay. so let me tell you something so shy rack is yeah. a is a new term like right. let's say in the last 10 years okay so for the for the vets mm -hmm. you know uh we we consider that you know a term that that the kids are into <laughs> Yeah, you know, so that's why I was mad at Spike. Spike, I was mad at you <laughs> because you know, yeah, you 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 made the movie about it, um, but yeah, that's no, we we don't we never say shot right. Mm -hmm. What my, part of Chicago generation. were you born and raised? So I'm from the South Side. South Side. I lived all over the South Side. Okay. You know, my my formative years, I was on 91st and Merrill, Southeast. Mm -hmm. Um, but I li I've lived in the Wild Hunters. I've lived in Terror Town. Mm -hmm. I lived in Murder Town. I lived in High Park. No, so K Town's on the west side. Okay. Shout out to the to the uh -huh. to the um you know uh uh Tate brothers, yeah. you know. Cause you know, we have a we have a we have a a, a friendly rivalry, okay. South Side versus West Side. Okay. But I will tell you, I went to high school on the West Side. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got people over there. I got mm -hmm. people where I'm from, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I was I was kind of all around the city. So where you grew up, was it GD? Uh, BD oh or VL? <laughs> Goodness gracious. So listen, so <laughs> I grew up right outside Jeffrey Manor. Mm -hmm. So my elementary school was on 93rd. Mm -hmm. So that's 93rd Boss, Boss Pimp. So that's mm -hmm. GD. Okay. However, right down the street, starting at 89th Street, was the Vice Lord, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just to the east of us were the Latin Kings up on Commercial, mm -hmm. and we had the Blackstone Rangers mm -hmm. just to the west of us down. So wow. we were boxed in. Dang. So like, this is a true story. So literally, uh, when we were shorties, like, we, we walked everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Whether it was baseball practice, you know, going to the park, mm -hmm. and because we walked through different neighborhoods, 
and I'm and I'm going back to like we like eight, nine, ten, mm -hmm. right? We would literally practice other people's handshakes <laughs> to blend in, in depending on where you them. walking through. Yeah, you, you, you try, <laughs> listen, you, hey, you trying to go to White That's Hand smart. on Stony yeah, Island? Be like, yeah. oh yeah, uh, 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 <laughs> keep it moving because. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Least resistance. <laughs> yes. Yes. Gets you home. Yes. You know, but, but like I said, we were like kids, kids, yeah. you know. Then when we got older yeah. and it got more serious. Yeah. You know, yeah. then, you know, yeah, the reindeer games were over at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, I mean, you growing up in this environment, what kept you from getting sucked up with all that and, and, and making different choices? Oh, man. You know what? So I was a very popular fat kid, right? So I was the heavy D of my neighborhood. I, I was Man. big as hell. Rest in peace to heavy D. He was oh, dope. listen. He was dope. Heavy yeah. D is in my top 10. Yeah. Like right. he don't get he don't get the respect he deserves. He don't he get deserves. the respect, bro. Right. But I was big as hell, but mm. I could dance my ass off. You know, I could sing a little bit. I was a, a, a all-star baseball player. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. So. I, I was in the popular crowd, mm -hmm. but I also had straight A's my whole life. Mm. And, and so two things happened. One, because I had the straight A's, they didn't want to take me on their bogus missions with them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then, cause, and, and it was more of a protection thing, right? right? That's what they did back you then. Get, you getting the grades, <laughs> That's right. you don't need to do this, right? That's right. The second thing happened though, my fifth, uh, in fifth grade, my mom became Chicago PD. Oh, no. Oh, wow. You so, had a chance. So <laughs> yeah. they was really like, Brett, take your ass yeah, off, right? Yeah. So like in Boys in the Hood, when, when, when Trey was like, doh, let me out the car. Yeah, let me yeah. out the car. I was Trey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you was Trey. <laughs> OK. I was Trey. You know so what I'm saying? So what is it like having growing up in that environment, Ooh. but then having a parent that's law enforcement? Man. Um, so OK. So. It was an adventure because a lot, let, let, let me be real, 90% of my friends were getting in trouble. Yes. So I would literally be with my mom and, you know, this guy, well, I ain't gonna say names, <laughs> but, but this guy and that guy walking down the street, throwing mm -hmm. up gang signs to me in the car I'm with mm -hmm. my mom, you know, or she like, yo, I had to go by such and such's house, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Talking about my friends. Now these mm -hmm. are people that would like spend the night at my house. Right. So when your mom walks in and it's like, hey, <clears throat> and she mm -hmm. having conversations with people that spending the night, mm -hmm. but on some law enforcement, <laughs> right? You like, yo, like what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah and yeah. so, um, so I feel like I saw the best of both worlds. <sighs> okay. You know what I mean? <clears throat> um, but but let me tell you how gangster my mom was. So. In her police academy, they used to wear these uh, sweatsuits. Mm. It was all navy blue with the badge number in white mm -hmm. on, on your chest and on your leg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to wear my mom's like clothes, like, like the sweats and stuff. Because mm -hmm. like, before I had my growth spurt, we were the same height and stuff. Mm -hmm. She would send me to school in them police academy sweats wow. sometimes. Like, so like everybody So kids didn't knew. try to bully you in no, behind that? Hell, no. Moms, moms was a G. Did y'all ever see um, the movie uh, Police Academy? Yeah. Love so it. Yeah. my mom, no boy, my mom, her nickname was Tackleberry. Oh, wow. If you remember the I movie. I remember Tackleberry because Tackle he had Barry, ass gun. He was gun happy. Yeah, yeah, he's gun happy, yeah. My mother, five, five foot three. Yeah. Petite, right? She carried a 38, mm -hmm. a 357 <clears throat> Magnum, and a four shooter Ooh, on her at all times. Wow. Okay. So like, yeah. so she was she she was she was a little yeah. different. That was a first, that was her first gun. <laughs> was, I gave her yeah. a 357 yes. when yeah. she got grown and moved out. The speed loaders yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so your mama had that pistol yeah. wall. Oh, listen, she, was... she oh her, her main one, a 357. She called it boom boom. Boom boom. Yeah. So let me find let me find yeah. out you was Keenan Ivory Rain Wayne's <laughs> and I'm gonna get you sucker. <laughs> hey. And that was your mom. Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, moms didn't play. Like you you know what, like, and, and here's the thing, with all the, the, the guys that were doing wrong, mm -hmm. quote unquote, that I was hanging out with, the most gangster shit I ever seen was like my mom doing, like mm -hmm. I've been with my mom when she had to pull down on people. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. And I and I and I'm like, yo, I'm a kid. Yeah, yeah. But she got to do she what she had got the to license do, right? though. She had the right to do that. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you so, grow up with your dad? Yeah. So my mom and dad got uh married in college. Mm. They both went to Southern Illinois University, mm -hmm. got married, had me, and then got a divorce when I was two. Mm -hmm. So Pops moved back to Peoria, where he's from. Richard Pryor, shout out to Richard yeah, Pryor. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Richard Pryor was my granddad's best friend. Okay. Um, and then my mom moved back to Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I would spend my mm -hmm. school year and baseball season in Chicago mm -hmm. and then go down to Peoria and spend my summers with my mm -hmm. pops. Yeah. I got a question, random question. I used to go to Chicago. Well, let me not put the 10 on the two. I've been a few times okay. in the 80s as a kid. Yeah. It was a place called Markham. Yeah, yeah, Markham, yeah, Markham. Markham Skating Ring. Yeah, I, it was a city. Oh, the city, but, yeah. But it's, back it's a south then, suburb. in the yeah. 80s, it was like nice. Is it still nice? No, nah, no. Nah, hey, oh, okay. No, nah, let me tell you something. Right. No, nah, so <laughs> the, 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 south, the south suburbs yeah. went crazy. Okay. But, okay, true, true story. Um, we had the largest housing projects in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, Cabrini Robert Green. Taylor Homes, yeah. Cabrini Green. Yep. In the mid-90s, when they decided to tear them down, they literally took all, all of the residents and shipped them out mm -hmm. to yep. the suburbs. That's right. So whether it's the south suburbs, the west suburbs, even in some cases the north suburbs, right? So Calumet City, Dalton, Markham, mm -hmm. those used to be like considered- Yeah, nice. You live out in the suburbs, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Nah, that's, that's, it goes down. Man, listen. It, it's safer in the city now than some of them <laughs> places we're talking about. Yeah. Gentrification. When I was out yeah. there, this had to be 84, bro, because I remember yeah. Lisa Lisa and Cold Jam. I wonder if I take you home. Yep. That was the hot that yep. summer. Yep. And um, I had some aunt, uh, aunt, but they house was big, like had double door <laughs> entry and they had the big right. screen. Remember the big plastic one, you know what I mean, with the wood cabinet? Yeah. Like, they had some money. Yeah. Yeah. And I just remember being out there, I was like, damn, this is different than when we go back to the city. Cause back to the city was like some good times type. Absolutely. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. yeah, but I, you know, I figured it was different. Yeah, but, man. But you know, the funny thing about it, my mother used to tell me, right? She used to tell me that 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 black folks move to where white folks are and white folks move to where the jobs are. Uh, you know what I mean? So a lot of time, I see right. that in every city. Like back in the 80s and the yeah. 90s, all the black people wanted to get out of the hood right. and go to these suburbs. But now, fast forward 15, 20 years later, right. you start seeing happening in places that you never would growing up. But here's the difference, mm -hmm. right? And I don't care if it's you know Chicago, Kansas City, mm -hmm. LA. The black people are trying to escape the circumstance. Yes. We don't want to be afraid to walk to school mm -hmm. or to park our car or, right? Mm -hmm. On the flip side, the white people are not afraid of any of that. No. Mm -mm. So, no. so during gentrification, yeah. so mm -hmm. right here in LA, right? Yeah. I used to go to the cork mm -hmm. all the time on Adams, right in between Crenshaw and La Brea. Mm -hmm. That, like, that is quintessential South Central Los mm -hmm. Angeles. Yep. They don't use that term anymore, but mm -hmm. we know what I'm talking yeah, about, for right? Sure. When it started gentrifying and you started seeing white people walking their dogs walking at they midnight mm -hmm. yes. Yes. down Adams, yep. <laughs> we start asking them, y'all know where y'all at? Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the, 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 the fear yeah. they don't have because mm -hmm. when you grow up, no matter where you live, when you grow up and everything is possible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. told to you, it's said to you, you believe that. Mm -hmm. why, why, would you, why would you fear anything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's a different existence. Yeah. But if you challenge the other side, flip that coin. Yeah. yeah. And you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. Think about it. The yeah. fact that we look at each other, you know yeah. what I mean? And we will look past the other. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And just, ah, whatever. Right. We will run past them to run to one of ours and knock them down. Right. That's, that's crazy. Right. That's, a, that's deep. Man, listen, listen. Um, what did they say? The, uh, the system is not broken. Mm -hmm. It's doing exactly what it was designed to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there mm -hmm. are a lot of things, you know, within our culture that mm -hmm. have been set up to make us fearful, to make us mm -hmm. pit against one another. That's right. And, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, it's hard to break that. But but I'll tell you, 
that was one of my things. So growing up in Chicago, mm -hmm. and I actually experienced it because I, I went to college here in LA. I went mm -hmm. to USC. Mm -hmm. And um, in Chicago or in LA, do you know how many people that I have talked to locals that have not been certain places in their own city? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. That's crazy. That's when we first Came moved out beach. here. Right. When we first moved out here, I lived in Brentwood. Yeah. We, right at what yeah. was we uh Barrington, uh, Barrington <laughs> yeah, and yeah. San Vicente. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. And I would meet people from South LA, you know, South Central, and they'd be like, Where you live? I say Brentwood. They didn't know what the hell I was talking about. And right. I was like, Where? I said Brentwood. <laughs> you know, where OJ and the whole yeah, thing. Absolutely. Right? And they was like, Oh man, you far. Why are you over there? And I'm like, Huh? I'm right here. <laughs> I'm right here. Invisible chains. Yep. Right? Red line. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, Barrington and San Vicente, shout out to the Cheesecake Factory that used to be right there. <laughs> Here we go with the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, right. I don't care. Cheesecake hey. Factory, bang it. It's good. Bang it. It's good. Bang it. Okay. Me, me and Jasmine are having plea meetings in the, in the oh, Cheesecake what? Factory. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. It's banging. Fridays done fell off a little bit, but yeah. Cheesecake Factory is always That's satisfactory. A fact. That's, a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. But, but no, listen, I'm like, yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'm curious, what, what, what kind of you being, because we both Midwest boys, mm -hmm. it, and even though we're eight hours away from each other, still very, very different. Very, yeah. very different. Yeah. Um, what kind of hip hop did you grow up listening to? Who did you grow up listening to? All right. So, so look, let me say this. So, so one, is it a disclaimer? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly. Uh -huh. Slightly. One, very much so into hip hop and R&B. Okay. I do not separate the two because, you know what I'm saying? It's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a different genre, mm -hmm. but for me, it's about the culture. Okay. Right? And okay. so when I think back to mm -hmm. the 80s, right? Yep. So I'm bumping, you know... Prince and Michael Jackson That's right. and Luther That's at right. the same time that I'm listening to Heavy D, LL, Run That's DMC, right. yes, sir. MC Light, you know what I mean? At the same time, mm -hmm. because a lot of people like to separate mm -hmm. R&B and hip hop. Mm -hmm. Radio stations in Chicago played it all. Yeah. So, so I had the R&B, I had the, the hip hop, and because I'm from Chicago, I had the house music. The house music. You know what I'm saying? Which, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if y'all ready for that. Yeah. But, that, that's a, I, I, I will tell you this. I will tell you this. Is that the same as the DC type? No. That's different from DC. DC is go-go. Go-go. Right, right. But, right, but right, right. Baltimore mm -hmm. has house. Okay. Because, you know, I DC know and Chicago Baltimore. had a house music. Well, first of all, it, it, it was created in Chicago at that. the warehouse. Wow. Okay. Right? That's why it's called house music. Okay. And and I, I said it like that to let everybody from New York know <laughs> it did not start in New York. Uh, but uh but yeah, so but no, so that factored in. So like when we would go to the to the to the um to the skating rink, mm -hmm. so we had the rink on 87th, or yeah. we had Markham out yeah. in yeah. the suburbs, you know, we would skate and then we would go to the dance floor part. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? They was playing the house, they was playing the R and B, they was playing you know, the hip hop. Mm -hmm. But here's the other thing about Chicago. We had a deep connection to the old school uh, uh, black music as well. Right. Because there's another faction of house music called Deep House, mm -hmm. which is really a regurgitation of 70s disco, like Cheryl Lynn okay. and putting different, uh, mixing two songs together from that era. Oh, wow. And like at the skating rink, they called them JBs. They would play all James Brown stuff mm -hmm. for, okay. for a certain section, right? Yeah. All right, but now I'm going to answer your question. So um, <laughs> what hip hop? <laughs> yeah, what hip hop? <laughs> because it, it, it's, it's all inclusive. I'm a music head. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's my first love. Really? Yeah. And so like I could sit here and talk about music all day. Um, but, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, you know, the, the, the heavy Ds, the LLs was mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. to me, right? Mm -hmm. And then... I really got into the to the MC lights and the Queen Latifahs. Mm -hmm. Um and and then an interesting thing happened. West Coast beats and rhythms yep. Yep. resonated in the Midwest. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. So I used to listen, to, I mean, not that I stopped listening to mm -hmm. it, but it literally went from X Clan and Public Enemy <laughs> and Rock Him yeah. yeah. to 
NWA, yeah. Snoop, yeah. Two, right? Yeah. And but it was it was because now think about this: the West Coast sound mm -hmm. was sampling the old school R and B yep. that we were exactly. listening to. That we grew up listening yeah, to. Yeah, That's why I yeah. resonated because on yeah. the East Coast, it was more break beats and boom bap right. and more hip hop. Right. That didn't really, right. I didn't really get into that. You know, Man, but, let me tell you something. I, I, I didn't experience my first cypher. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's East Coast. Yeah, that's East Coast. Right? Yeah, that's East Coast. right? Yep. Standing, uh, yep. standing in the middle yep. of a circle yep. and rap. Yeah. Yep. Listen, we was dancing. Did you ever want to rap? <laughs> I mean, I, I bust a bar too. Really? That. <laughs> what, what was I, your rap name? So I had a stage name. What was your stage name? It was Brett Capri. Brett Capri. My first name, my my middle name. Okay. okay. But so to that, um, uh -huh. I was in a couple of groups. A little dance troops. Well, I, I I was in a singing group. Uh, I was in uh, a dance. Okay. Group. So you said you could dance, like yeah, heavy no, D, no, right? like you like could move. So, so, yeah. so we about the same age. So, was you on the like the kid and play the MC Hammer, the or was you like Cabbage Patch? Like, what was you Listen, doing, Roger Rabbit? Like, first of all, first of all, I could juke. Okay, I'm about to go yeah, Chicago yeah. and juke. Okay. I could juke. I got juke, footwork. Juke. Okay, now, now I got arthritis <laughs> in the knees now. But I'm saying, if, if y'all don't know what footwork is, okay. Yeah. But that's when I could jack my body. Okay, okay. But then I don't know what nothing is. Jack my body, jack my body, jack. What jack, is jack, that jack. move? This though? is house music. Oh, see, house that's what I'm saying. Move. Okay, mm. okay. Right. So okay, right. I'm gonna have to look that up. Okay, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was doing all of that, right? Uh huh. In '88, when Let's get it started. Mm -hmm. um, no, what was what was the first Hammer video? We saw? Mm -hmm. Hammer, you ain't hitting in New York. Turn this mother and out. Yeah. Turn this what? mother out. Listen, I was just working out to that listen, song the other day. He listen. was jamming on "Turn This Mother Out." So, he was so now I was jamming. You got young kids. Yep. That was dancing the house music. Yep. We were we were dancing the house music. Mm -hmm. We were break dancing the hip hop. Mm -hmm. And now you got Hammer with, with the pants mm -hmm. doing the running man and yeah. the cap, right? So now, but here's the thing though. So I, I can tell you I was in singing groups, right? Yeah. So we had the popular dances. Mm -hmm. we, we were saving that for like the talent shows mm -hmm. during the performances. But, but, but when Hammer brought this high energy yeah. type thing, listen, yeah. I, I had I had hammer. You suits. had the hammer pants. I had, I had patent leather shoes with the metal tips. Did you? I oh the, yeah. Oh the black with the in, colored polka dot. I didn't get into that because by the time hammer came around, because I'm in Kansas City, so yeah, we're yeah. very heavily West Coast influenced. Right, right, right. Uh, both Bay Area and Southern California. Yeah. So when hammer came around, you we was, was in Dickies. I'm in Dickies and Cortez. Oh, so you had already. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm already looking like I'm right <laughs> out of colors, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. already, you know. No, no. And so, so it's funny, yeah. right? So, so when I when I talk about that crew I was rolling with, mm -hmm. right? So when I was in the hammer pants phase, they were in Dickies and Pendleton. Yeah, right? yeah, yes. And yes, they'd sir. be like, let Brett go dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then yeah. we get together, then we, you know, play yeah. Sega Genesis or we go who? <laughs> right? So you was Sega over Nintendo? Well, okay. So we started off with the Atari 2600. That's I mean, right. We about to, right. That's right. That's right. Then we went to the 7800. Yeah. Then yeah. we did Commodore 64. Commodore. 64. Oh, see, that was the computer. Was that you the had the dish, Coleco di dish drive. Was, was that? No, Coleco. That was some. That was uh, Coleco, Coleco Vision. Vision. Right. Coleco Vision. Yeah. Um. Then from there, the Nintendo came out. The first one. The first one. Yeah. That's what you had to take the cartridge and out. Blow it. <laughs> yeah. Right. You got to yep. blow it. You got to blow it. You know what I'm saying? Tecmo Bowl. Right? Tecmo Bowl. Tec oh, come on, Bo bro. Jackson was unstoppable. Yeah, that Miami was, a cheat was code. my team. Miami was my team. Really? Wait. And the 49ers. Wait. If you have Miami, that means you only threw the ball. Basically, okay. yeah, I didn't okay. ever See, run it. I, I never played run the ball. it. I, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. So, and then after that, Sega Genesis changed the game of graphics. It the made sixty-four it, bit. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I couldn't 60, get into was, Sega because the controllers were too bulky, yeah, and I didn't like shape. that three, that A B C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was yeah, awkward. Yeah. But know? then, if you think about it, so Sega mm -hmm. was the Samsung back then because mm -hmm. Nintendo. Then mm -hmm. change their control mm -hmm. to be more like the Sega mm -hmm. Genesis, That's right. just like the iPhone. Yeah. Yes, y'all, y'all, y'all take Android. all. Y'all, I'm Android. Y'all take. Oh, well, me too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Team Android. The iPhone, they take all of the features on they Samsung had it, phones. They yeah, yeah. Had it. Shout out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, so yeah, yeah. so you know, uh, so we was you know playing the video games and yes. and we were allowed 
Uh-huh. And, and 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 this is the thing about the hood then versus my perception of it now. Because mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't, I ain't in the hood no more. Yeah. But then we were allowed to have outside interests. Mm-hmm. We were allowed that's right. to dance mm-hmm. and still be respected. No, that's right. Because listen, if we got to get them up, we got to get them you up. Chunk you know what I'm saying? It don't them. matter that that's I can right. run a man all around this No, that's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I knew some cats that were steppers. <laughs> they could step and yeah. they step. But that's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So like, so like, you know, when the West Coast started the We Don't Dance, We Boogie, yeah. gangsters in the Midwest dance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Hey, hey, and we'll wipe their face and be like, all right, all right, what are we doing now? You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, that was a whole experience. Yeah, yeah. So you still didn't tell me all your hip hop, uh, the people you listen to. So, oh my god. So, so you didn't get to West Coast. No, I did get to West Coast. So, so uh the, first of all, the chronic album mm-hmm. changed life. Mm-hmm. And it changed life because before that, we had Ice T, we had NWA. That's right. NWA, in my opinion, didn't have as big of an impact until later, when mm-hmm. you think back on what we were <clears throat> listening to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because because at the time, it was just like, oh, that's the stuff that you're not supposed to listen to, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But at the same time that I'm listening with, uh, to NWA, mm-hmm. I'm also listening to Two Live Crew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and going through that whole phase, right? But then, so then we, you know, we got the mm-hmm. Chronic album. First of all, Snoop, uh, uh, Corrupt, mm-hmm. shout out to Lady of Rage. Yeah. Let me say, mm-hmm. it opened up my mind. Oh, DOC. Shout out to DOC. Right? Mm-hmm. But then something mm-hmm. happened that the musicians, the, those of us that are musicians at mm-hmm. heart, when Digital Underground, mm-hmm start doing hip hop yeah. <clears throat> to live instrumentation. Wait, what? Yeah. What we doing? <laughs> right? Like, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? And people people Shock don't even talk G. about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shock G, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And and and, mm-hmm. and the whole, you know, pop coming out of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um let, let me ask you something yeah. real quick. So uh special ed, shout out to special ed. Um he just recently <laughs> said yeah. that yeah. that he felt like in WA you know, uh, ruined hip hop right. and influenced the whole generation of right. degenerate, you know, uh, uh, little thugs. Yeah. Do what? What, what is your, your take? Do you agree with that? Well, so I, I saw the comments. Mm-hmm. I also saw the the visual conference mm-hmm. call that he had mm-hmm. to have with Dog Pound. Yep. Shout out to Big A. Yep. That, that, that's, that's, Big my a. Big, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's my boy. Big, that's my boy. That's OG. Oh, oh yeah. we got some stories. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Underworld Records and Compton. Yeah. Um, I feel like the gangsters already existed. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. listening to N.W.A. <clears throat> didn't create the gangsters. Mm-hmm. Like, we had gangsters in the neighborhood mm-hmm. before it was okay to rap about it. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, it just, and I hate to sound like Ice Cube yeah. when he says, you know, we just were reporting back that's what right. was happening. But that's, that's the right. truth. You know, now, now. I give a little pushback on. Well, that. well, I'm gonna say this though. Yeah, they were reporting back what they were hearing about. That's right. Okay. No, they, no I'm not. I'm not so, saying that everybody in no, WA was doing. No, I know exactly what oh, you're okay. saying. I mean, because I mean, nobody was. Easy well, was really kind of the you know the. the and I wasn't there. Yeah, but but, but from what I hear. <laughs> yeah, but but this is the thing though. I think that when you had okay, like when you had Ice T, right? Mm-hmm. Ice T did more reporting. I believe that was reporting because in WA, if you think back, they were the first ones to use first person. I'm from the gang called Niggas with Attitudes, right? Ice T just talked about the pimps, the players, this, that, and the other. They made it first person where it was like, no, I'm doing this. So, so let me so, add, okay, so let me okay, push okay, back okay, a little bit. So then, because I was a gangster rapper and I made excuses for a lot of right. for a lot of years, you right? Did. I did. Yes. I made excuses for a lot of years. <laughs> right. I'm like, nah, man, you need to raise your kids. Like we just doing, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. He's yeah, yeah. Right. An example. Yeah, I, right. like my daughter, I raised her on gangster rap. What y'all talking about? Right. But the truth of the matter is, because now you're reaching mm-hmm. um, suburbia, yeah. you know, and you're reaching squares. You're reaching people that don't really understand what they're listening to, but they're enamored with it, right? Yeah. So. I think what it what it breeded, and I watched it. What it bre- yeah, you're reporting what's going on, and you're also contextualizing what we're seeing in the crack epidemic. Yeah. So when I'm seeing Ice T and 
and NWA, what they rapping about the gold chains and the dope, dope dealers and things like that. I'm just a kid on my bike, but I'm seeing it. Yep. I'm like, oh, okay, they got the Turkish ropes. They got the 30s and Vogue's. Oh, that's mm-hmm. what that is, right? But as we're listening to it as kids, it's also influencing a negative attitude because now we're trying to emulate that, you know? Right. And so now where before, you know, think about it because like you said earlier, we grew up to hip hop, but we also grew up to REO Speedwagon, Culture Club, Boy George, yeah. you know, Wham. Cause you know, hip hop is only just 50 this year, right? This Mr. Friday Yacht Rock video. right here. <laughs> yeah, 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 Yacht Rock. I'm Yacht Mr. Rock. Yacht Rock, right? right? Yeah. So I'm listening to Christopher Cross and all that shit, right? Yep. So, um, but it 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 did kind of give us this negative attitude that we started portraying toward each other. And again, you know, nobody wants to back down. So now everybody right. got this, oh, I'm ruthless, I'm this, I'm that, mm-hmm. you know. And so I think it did kind of contribute a little bit to to the culture, dumbing it down in that respect. Because did you notice having, because I was I wanted to ask that a little bit earlier because, so I didn't, obviously, I didn't grow up on East Coast music right. besides LL. That's right. Yeah. LL. Right. <laughs> right. LL. So, right. But I can acknowledge and see, like, there's a huge cultural difference when I meet even people, rappers from the East Coast right. versus meeting people, rappers from L.A., so you being a fan of both and being yeah. immersed in both, like, did you see dem- like the demographic change between, okay, MC, like Queen Latifah, you know, Public Enemy, KRS to NWA, Snoop, well, I, et cetera? I, you yeah, know? I think, I think, um, I think people were just talking in the voice. Mm-hmm. Of where they were coming from, right? Mm-hmm. If 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 we're gonna keep it funky, LL's I'm bad is about whooping your ass. Yes. That's right. Yes. But so, whooping okay. your ass is a lot different <laughs> okay. than drive by. I feel that. I feel that. But now I will say this. I will yeah. say this. I don't think gangster rap <clears throat> uh uh made people become gangsters. Mm. I feel gangster rap helped to popularize yes. gang culture. It did. It sensationalized it. You're absolutely the right. The gang culture. Yes. Now, so that was the difference yep. because yep. NWA, for instance, weren't saying, I'm just going to randomly come shoot up your block. No, this is right. They, they were shooting up the ops. This is true. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So In their songs. In, in their songs. <laughs> yeah. in, no, I'm saying in their songs. In their yeah. songs. Yeah. In their songs. <laughs> but when <clears throat> LL talked a lot of shit, he did. He did. And, and now, it sounded a little different, right? Right. He like, you know what I'm saying? You eating, you he's know what I'm saying? Cool cookies. <laughs> yeah. He, he's yeah. smashing your face. Yeah. He's smashing your girl. Right. Ain't nothing yeah. you could do about right. it. Right, right. That's right. He like, what? Yeah. See me in the street. Yeah. Right? Like, so, so the energy. Yeah. The fa- no. The foundation of the energy, mm-hmm. I feel like, was the same. Mm-hmm. Now, when, when Easy's pulling out. AKs that's and pointing the red dot at the at It's the very camera. different. Okay, that's different. It's very different. I get it. Yeah. yeah. But even in the rap though, because LL was, he was alpha male. He was blend. Yeah. He was really the first one to blend that I'm a ladies' man, but I'm yes. still rough. Right, right, right. right. Let but me ask you. So WA and them was straight out of some gang. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. What was KRS One's criminal minded about? I didn't really get into BDP like okay. that. But but criminal minded was dope though. I, I but what remember. I'm saying is, you know, some East Coast. What, yep. <laughs> what, one could argue he was giving you a criminal's perspective. Yes, but low key, possibly saying why you shouldn't do that. No, he, but he didn't just say you shouldn't do that. You he had was to putting, imp- he was putting the medicine in the okay. candy. Okay. Yes, okay. Karis One was doing that, and, as was Ice T. Because right, right. Ice T, you listen to an Ice T song, right? right? First verse. Oh man, we got bitches, we got dope, yeah, yeah, yeah. we got money. Second verse, second verse, man, we got the big house, we taking trips, we this, but then always on the third verse, now I'm in jail. Right, right, you know, you're right. <laughs> it's like, I'm dead. I'm like, I, damn, I, that's what it is? I admit that. that. I admit that. But let me, let me tell you something about what I feel with my generation. And this is why I think, this is why, and I'm about to sound like some Tupac said, because Tupac was like, yo, you talk about the rap records, but you don't talk about how many people yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger killed in Terminator. This is true. And Stallone mm-hmm. and all these this other things, right? Mm-hmm. I will say the difference with that is you know when you're watching a movie. Exactly. Mm-hmm. When you're listening to a song, you think these people are really doing this, right? Mm-hmm. But how do you explain? So my era, mm-hmm. 
Which is our era. Our, right, yeah. right. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Our era, you have a bunch of college graduates mm-hmm. that were at parties, half naked, dancing to pop your coochie. Yep. Ain't no fun. Yeah. And yeah. every song that Death Row made. That's right. <laughs> How do you explain being able to that we were able to separate mm-hmm. the music from oh this is what we need to be <clears throat> I, like I don't I don't have I'm, an answer I, for that I, I, I do I think okay. I can kind of contextualize it a bit I think it's because um so when you think about the movies right when we see Al Pacino mm-hmm. he doesn't act like uh Scarface <laughs> on his interviews right okay mm-hmm. you yeah. know so you clearly see that okay this is Al Pacino he played a character. Whereas in hip hop, we created this thing where you gotta be real. It has to be authentic. Right. And then it came in with the studio gangster. Yeah. Oh, you ain't real. They talk. You see, so now it becomes this pressure to live up to this, this art form. Yeah. You know, so I think we created that to where this it's this expectation of, and if you ain't rapping about it, you whack, you fake. You know, and that's where people get in trouble. And that's where now when you fast forward with social media and a lot of the Thundercats. They getting in trouble now because it's like, I got to be real. I got to show them I'm really living this, even right. if I tell on myself. <laughs> right, right, right. Because if it's not on video, it doesn't happen, right? Yeah. So I think that that's what, that, that, that expectation was put there to be authentic because hip hop was supposed to be authentic. So it wait, let me a, ask you. Yeah. Because you, you ask everybody when they come here. So when mm-hmm. it comes to female rap, Mm-hmm. Do you think that's why it's so demonized now? Because you still have that male influence of, oh, you got to be real. Because it's the same thing. Like, we, okay, for example, Meg Thee Stallion, she's a college graduate. Mm-hmm. She has other business ventures, mm-hmm. but, you know, she got a hot mm-hmm. girl life. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it's because y'all have the influence and now nah, you got to live it. And now you feel like that influence mm-hmm. is permeating to young women and the demographic. Because y'all can separate <sighs> it with y'all, but when it comes to us, it's like, no, nah, see, it's the young nah, girls, it's this I, and that. I, I think, I think the, the, so if you remember when I was a rapper, right? Mm-hmm. I did this innately, right? Mm-hmm. I, I was who I was on record. But then when I would go do interviews, they'd mm-hmm. always, they would always say, wow, you speak very well. Like, you're very nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, I was shocked that they're saying that. Right. Because they're expecting me to walk in like I sound on tape. Right. And I'm like, well, no, I'm in character. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a part of me. But now I'm, you know, so just like an actor. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. So, yeah, I'm doing all of that. But when I come here, I'm a human being. Yeah. You know, so I think what you're saying with Megan Thee Stallion is the fact that she doesn't lead with her education. She doesn't. She doesn't promote that. She doesn't well, she talk does. about that. No, she does. She does? Yeah. I've never seen it. You know yeah. What I mean? oh, she has well. a whole, she had like a whole, um, like she got like the bad bees have bad days. Like she talks about mental health and oh. she always showed herself, you know, working on her degree while she was touring. Oh, yeah. Well, pardon my ignorance. I, I hadn't now, seen all, all of them I don't. That's why her, I like men. All, all I see from her, even <laughs> recently, <laughs> is her shaking her ass. You know? But, 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 but you know what though? So I actually think female MCs get a bad rap. Because we happen to see, and and we know about recent events, right? We happen Mm -hmm. to see a lot of them, you know, half naked Mm -hmm. and talking about sescapades, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Which, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Kim created that genre. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is it choice? Okay. Choice was before. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. You remember choice? No. Oh, okay. But no, but I'm <laughs> okay. saying thank yeah, you for yeah. that correction. Just shout out to Rap a Lot Records Choice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But 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 watch this though. What we don't talk about is in addition to Light and Latifah and Brat and Rod Digger, mm-hmm. you know, and Boss. Oh, and shout Lady out to the boss. What? Oh, yeah. And boss, Lady of Rage. But watch yeah. this. And Missy Elliott. Yeah. yeah. And Lauren Hill. Mm-hmm. Lauren Hill is a rapper. <laughs> that knows how to sing. That's that's my opinion. They were anyway, arguing about that a few weeks ago here. But yeah. but I'm saying like like when you you know uh-huh. Tink and yeah. so yes Cardi Nikki uh-huh. Meg got it Glow got it yeah. right yeah I do believe there are more female rappers mm-hmm. that are not talking about. Mm-hmm. Body parts and dressing mm-hmm. half naked. So why don't they get the shine and get the push? Well, 
I, I just rattled off like 10 names. <laughs> but they don't get the shine or the push, though. They do. Nikki you do. Know, Nikki does. Nikki Doja. Who? Nikki, who? Nikki Minaj. Doja. No, she, K- she's with the, she can rap, but she le- still leads with the hyper sexualized kind of. To you. you know, what, what do you mean? Let me, let me tell you this. Let me tell you. This. If if Black Streets No Diggity come on right now, mm-hmm. everybody in this building going to mm-hmm. sing the Queen Pen part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's shine, right? Like right, I, I, don't, right. I don't. Now, right. I mean, I understand well, what you're I'm saying. saying as a whole, though. That's only right. one mm-hmm. out of. You know so, what I mean? But maybe they report. But like he said, some of them like there's always been hoes. So now they're just reporting their experience. You know what I mean? They're just reporting. So yes, no. Does it? Can it negatively impact young girls and all that? Of course, mm-hmm. I'm a big sister. I know mm-hmm. she does everything that I do. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Just yeah. naturally. My youngest daughter. So yes, my mm-hmm. little sister. So no, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like you brought up a valid point, or they're just reporting their life. So it's a revolt for the hoes. It's not the a revolt for the hoes. want to be hoes. accounted for. No, right. you and these hoes. No, I'm just saying for. the hoes want to be accounted well, no, for. They no, want to be ma- heard. Well, not necessarily, because you also have your housewives that like female rap. Maybe it's an aspect of them too. They're like, man, I can't explore this. So she gives me, you know, the confidence to explore that aspect of me. Where my camera? That's not. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? <laughs> let, let, let me let me say this. What I think happens in our society is that mm-hmm. we focus on the minority mm-hmm. every time, yeah. and we make that the majority. Mm-hmm. Right. Here's an analogy. Mm-hmm. If you go on a block, mm-hmm. it's 20 houses on both sides of the street, so you got 40 houses. Mm-hmm. If three of those 40 houses have gang bangers or drug dealers or yeah. drug addicts. It's going to pollute it's, the it's whole a, it's block. It's a bad block, right? It's, it's a bad block. But yeah. it's 37 houses <laughs> on that block that that's true. get up and go to work every that's day. True. But see what I'm saying? That's the mind What trick. is that about the mind? Because I was just telling somebody about <laughs> yeah. that. I was like, I'll be looking at my YouTube page. I see a thousand comments of people saying right. how great you are. I get yes. one asshole to get in there and say something. I'm like, hold up. That's the one you want to come. What's wrong with you? And, and I, I ignore the thousand. I'm giving this one nobody energy mm-hmm. but 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 <laughs> that right there mm-hmm. is how we have to be in the entertainment business mm-hmm. like so as a network exec mm-hmm. i have to look at the fact 3 million people mm-hmm. watch this mm-hmm. show mm-hmm. 2.8 million of them liked it right if 100,000 people don't like it you can't satisfy everybody That's i right. cannot that's right. Change what I'm doing because, and I don't know what the math is, but yeah. because 2% mm-hmm. has but something wait, to say. So do people like it? So no. And I have a question yeah. for you as a network person. So going back to things being pushed on people, do you think things are pushed on people or you just think that the consumer is responding? <laughs> you know where I'm going. So, that, so that, that, that is a chicken and the egg scenario. Okay. But I, I will tell you this. It definitely depends on who's in the room making the decisions mm-hmm. for said shows and movies. Mm-hmm. That is why networks like All Black mm-hmm. are necessary because we mm-hmm. are sitting in a room saying we want mm-hmm. to tell this story and this right. story and this story. Right? Like this, like this. Like this, mm-hmm. right? Because let, let me say this. Let's say the three of us had a network mm-hmm. and we're in a room and we're discussing green lighting a new show. Are the three of us going to green light a show about ice fishing in Vermont? Mm, I, I don't know, know that I have. Because no. we, we, we have, yeah. Something we have nothing, <laughs> right. no ties to that, That's right? right. Mm-hmm. That's right. So the, the, the flip mm-hmm. is also true. Mm-hmm. Depending on the circumstances of the people sitting mm-hmm. in that room mm-hmm. determines what stories they feel like, oh, we, sh- we should tell this. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not, a, it's not a secret that for, you know, 40 years mm-hmm. in this business, black stories were relegated to maids and butlers, mm-hmm. That's right. slaves, That's right. athletes, criminals. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because there weren't black people in the room mm-hmm. making, making the decisions, decisions. on, yeah. oh, this is what I want to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And and, and 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 let me and something else about that. I get into I get into debates all the time about whether or not good times is a good reflection of black America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me say this about good times. Mm-hmm. It was a two-parent household. Everybody in that house either had a job or went to school. Right. Mm-hmm. Nobody in that house 
committed any crimes. No. Nope. So had the same mother and father, not even the, a blended mm-hmm. family. Right. Yeah. So why is that a bad reflection right. just because they didn't make a lot because of money? Because they were struggling. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that it's, probably appealed to more of black and white Americans. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I mean? Everybody ain't rich. Good times <laughs> and good times and family ties is the same mm-hmm. show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Family Ties had the best Michael. opening music. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah shout out. Yeah, shout out. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. That was a good song. That was a good um, song. You know what? So fast forward to you, you know, being, and I know you went to college and you had to grind and, and work your way up to where you are now yeah. as a GM of a big network. Um, so going into that, green lighting a film, is, like you said, is that something, is that decision based on just what your interests are or is it based on data? So... Um, it is, it is a combination of both. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'm gonna tell y'all the the real truth, right? Mm -hmm. I do not singularly Mm -hmm. green light anything at my company. Mm -hmm. I have a committee of people Mm -hmm. that are a direct replica of the subscriber base that we have on our network. Mm -hmm. So... That means I'm using people at work as, you know, a focus group. Right. Right? And so, and, and to, to build that focus group, mm-hmm. it's not just people that work at WeTV and All Black. So our parent company is AMC Networks. Mm-hmm. We pull from everywhere mm-hmm. to create a group that looks just like, so 80% of the all black subscriber it, uh, are black females 25 to 54. Mm. Okay. Our largest growing segment of that audience is 25 to 38, mm. right? What does that ultimately mean? That means we're actually a network that's getting younger. Mm. Most networks get older because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. their audience is mm-hmm. getting older. Mm-hmm. Um, we're getting younger, mm. but but that has to do with the content that we're green lighting, right? Does it also have to do with how it's being watched with everybody cord cutting and now everybody going to fast channels and OTT? Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're going to get in, into that okay. in a second because okay. we cut the cord, mm-hmm. but we created a new cord. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. okay. So <laughs> yeah, we still got a cord. Yeah. But so, so what we do is we, we take all of these submissions. We get on average anywhere from 350 to 450 show submissions a year. Mm -hmm. We have to literally narrow that down to two to three green lights of new shows every year. Oh, wow. Wow. That's a a tedious process. It is. You know what I mean? It is. But by using that focus group type of setting, Mm -hmm. we are green lighting stories and perspectives Mm -hmm. and, oh, wow, we didn't think of that, you Mm -hmm. know, uh, we are using that type of data mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to go into what we are now going to put our money into Got you. for that audience, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, with the process, sometimes I get outvoted, mm-hmm. right? So that's why it's not really about my preference, okay. right? Like, you know, I want, look, I would have loved to have done the new edition story. Oh yeah. Right? That was dope. That's that's yeah. right. That's dope. Before the new edition story, that would have that would have been too old for our demo. Got you. Okay. Right? Yeah. I got you. So that, that's heartbreaking yeah. to me. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Like, demographic. Because that's a story. <laughs> right. we, it's our the demographic. Yeah. It's, see it's the demographic. <laughs> yeah. Our viewer. Mm-hmm is not watching Denzel Washington movies. Mm. They are watching John David Washington movies. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. His son. That's a yeah. fact. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Again, that's yeah. heartbreaking. I'm like, what you what yeah. what? Yeah. We've tried it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So so you know, you have to listen to the market and you got to listen to the people that yeah. are paying yeah. their hard on hard earned money. Yeah, that's right. To support the network. Yeah. Wait, sidebar. Is Interview with the Vampire on AMC? Yes. Okay, that was the new one. Every, the, the new, new one. one that, oh, that new was one. dope. That was so good. New, I watched yes. that. that was I, dope. I wish I could take credit for that, but no, that, that, that's AMC Studios yeah, yeah. and oh, AMC wow. Network. Wow. Um, but let, it's in the family. Let, yeah, yeah. let me yeah, ask yeah. you this. So with the, and I, I asked Glenn the same thing. So with the emergence of um, the fast channels, the yeah. Tubies and different things like that, yeah. um, and now it being easier for people to get content on, yeah. um, 
do you feel like the micro budget film sector, do you feel like it's a good thing in terms of now you have more black creators, more stories, right. or do you feel like it's um, kind of replicating the black exploitation era all over again, and to some degree maybe cheapening mm -hmm. the 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 business or the art of movie making, so to speak, because it's still its own business model and can be very profitable. But right. from you as right. a top seat, do you what, what's your thought on that? All right, so let me so let me say this. So for decades, um, we only had one black network. Right. Mm -hmm. Shout out to BET, BET. Bob Johnson, mm -hmm. who also founded All Black. OK, so um, we only had that one network and that one network for decades was primarily music video. Yep. Right. And, and, and interview shows. What does that mean? That means the occasional black film that we would get was at the mercy of white Hollywood. Mm hmm. So, fast forwarding to what you're saying now about all of the different outlets we have, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a free mm -hmm. channel with, with ads, right. whether mm -hmm. you're paying for a subscription, mm -hmm. whether you're still doing cable, the fact that we have at least 18 to 20 outlets that are literally allowing black creatives to tell their stories mm -hmm. and share their perspectives as big. Mm -hmm. Now, within that perspective, or those perspectives being shared, you're not going to like all of them. Yep. <laughs> right? right? That's right. And so, <clears throat> watching a quote unquote cheap movie mm -hmm. on an outlet, I don't think that uh, damages the overall business mm -hmm. because you have 20 outlets that are offering content. That's right. Mm -hmm. All of those outlets are not reflective of yeah. the movies you're talking, because I know the movies you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it would only be a problem mm -hmm. if those were the only movies mm -hmm. being offered. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that, you know, just like mm -hmm. 30 years ago, if we only saw the slaves and, and, right. and the servants. Mm -hmm. right, right. You know what I mean? So diversity is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Diversity is I good. I agree. Do you feel like the opportunities for black actors and actresses uh, have increased? Absolutely. Uh, like, because yeah. you, you went from, you know, all of those actors auditioning for the three roles mm -hmm. that were available That's right. that quarter, yep. right? Yeah. To it's 20 networks. Yeah. Every everybody in this room right now could be on a different show or be <laughs> shooting a different movie. Right. And and having the luxury of being able to do that mm -hmm. um, is everything. Mm -hmm. Now, there is also growing pains. Mm -hmm that come along with having all of these options, mm -hmm. right? Cause so you could look, so, so I, keep, I keep saying 18 to 20 outlets. Mm -hmm. As lovers of the art, we might be like, you know what? That might be a little too many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, Cause it may water it down. It, yeah. it, 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 it could absolutely water it mm -hmm. down, right? Like when, so when, when you think about the music business, there's a reason why there's never been more than five major distribution companies. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why there's never been more than five major motion picture studios. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like, we are now in the wild, wild west mm -hmm. of SVOD and yes. AVOD. A absolutely. It all absolutely. has to consolidate at some point. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? What do you like, think that looks like? Because what I see yeah. is, you know, as I'm kind of breaking into that space as well. And I don't want to unfairly charge anyone with anything, right? <laughs> I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. But um, it seems like sometimes these platforms, they'll use, it's almost like gentrification yeah, of, of content. Sure. They, they use the small guys to yeah. build it up. Yeah. And then once they build it up, they start making it harder 
for those smaller guys to get in, and then they start kind of switching the format a little bit. Yeah. You know. I mean, listen, okay, I said, mm -hmm. so whether it's UPN, UPN or- You said it. No, I, I'm saying it. Yeah. Or CW. You said it. And, and, and the WB. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or how about this? Fox. Yeah. Right? Fox. Now, you just acquired Tubi, by the way. Listen, because it's big business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Listen, wow. how about this? How about this? If, if, if I make a movie and you have a service mm -hmm. and no matter what my movie looks like, but on your service, if it gets 40 million views mm -hmm. and you get paid based on views, yep. do you care what the content of my movie is? Mm -mm. You see what I'm saying? Because that's mm -mm. not why you get that's not why mm -hmm. you get paid. Right. You know, yeah, the content is not care. why you get paid. Yeah, you yeah. get paid for the views. For the views. Right. Yep. So going back to Fox, think about this, right? They they launched mm -hmm. with black programming. Why? Yep. Yep. Because it's inexpensive. Exactly. In comparison to the non-black programming. Right. That's right. You build up an audience mm -hmm. and then you say, hey. I have X number of eyeballs. Exactly. And then once you have X number of yeah. eyeballs, the people whose attention you couldn't get before, yeah. you say, hey, so I have this audience, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then you slowly start to shift mm -hmm. into an mm -hmm. NFL contract. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Right? Yeah. That, yeah, that, yeah, that's that's because that's I, what businesses do. Because I started seeing, like with Tubi, um, it was a couple years ago. And you keep saying easy. the name, by the way. I, I yeah, no, said I said it too. I know. You, I you said, said it. I, I have said not said it. that. Right, right. right. Okay. Um, the deliverables was super easy, you know? <laughs> yeah. But now I'm hearing some other kind of with the deliverables yeah, yeah. that I'm just sure that, yeah. you know, the young cats in the hood will not be able to provide, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, damn, they want it like that? Well, there's yeah. a way around that. No, they want the raw files like that. And it's like, oh, right. oh yeah, they're not going to um, be able to do that. Right. You know, I see it happening now. Listen. Let, let me say this. So, um, I'm going to tell the story. Uh, Jimmy, I, so I used to, so, so my first 10 years in the entertainment, I'm, I'm 30 years in, in, in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. My first 10 years, I was in the music business. Oh, wow. Right? So, I worked for Motown. Shout out to Mike, mm -hmm. Michael Bivens and Steve Shout Cook. Out to Michael they Bivens. gave me my first job. Okay. okay. Was you a &R? Uh, I was an intern. Oh, okay. Like, okay. now my first page I was at Polygram. Okay. Shout out uh, David Kimbrough. Uh -huh. um, but look, so spent 10 years in the music business. When I worked at Universal, this was around the year 2000. Jimmy Iovine told this story. And so I know this clip mm -hmm. might get picked up, but it's like, it it's his it story. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, Mac laptops were introducing a CD burner mm -hmm. in their laptop. Jimmy said he went to Steve Jobs' office and had a meeting with him. Mm -hmm. He said Steve had him sit down at the table, uh, and he said, how can I help you? And, and Jimmy said, hey, if you release these laptops that have these CD burners, it's going to put my industry out of business. Mm -hmm. He said, Steve looked at him and said, all business models were not meant to last forever. Are there any other questions? <laughs> the meeting was over. Wow. So, yeah. that, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. that, that's, that's the gangster <laughs> shit no, real. of the real. business that Jeez. we're doing. Yeah. Like, we, like it's not yeah. about content. I love it. It's about, <laughs> I love it. do you have yeah. a group of people that are willing to hand you some money mm -hmm. And if you do, how do you keep that going? And how do you make it sustainable? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So in my business, I don't care how you watch the, the, the content. Mm -hmm. Right? We mm -hmm. have a number of, you yeah. know, great original series on our right. networks. Right? I'm going to start plugging in a second. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but yeah. right? So here's the thing. I don't care if you pay a subscription mm -hmm. and watch it on All Black. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you watch on our fast channel called All Black Gems. Yeah. I don't care <laughs> if you get it on YouTube. Yeah. I don't care if you watch it on Wee TV. Talk your shit. On, 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 the, on the cable. <laughs> I'm gonna, Talk but, but, but Because here's the thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Content mm -hmm. is king and queen. Mm -hmm. 
it doesn't matter what the medium is. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we get too caught up in what is the medium. Yeah. In my lifetime, mm -hmm. I've gone from VHS yep. to Laserdisc yeah. yep. to DVD. Cassette, DVD, uh, records. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh yep. we ain't even gonna talk about the music. Yeah. Like, like yep. I was spending 45s growing up yeah. listening to my mom's stuff. H what? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, shout out to uh BB King. Yeah. But you know, my grandfather had an A track. Hell but yeah. no, but so how we listen to the music mm -hmm. or how we watch the TV doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Let's keep creating conversation worthy content mm -hmm. that people want to see. Have you ever passed on anything that oh that you regretted? <laughs> you was like, oh, I don't want that but Then you see it somewhere like, oh, I had it right there. So I have a story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a story. So um, two things. Mm -hmm. One, I did pass on a show called Johnson. Okay. That wound up being on Bounce mm -hmm. because I had a show called For the Love of Jason that was very similar mm -hmm. that we were in production on it. And so because it was very similar, when Cedric the Entertainer and Eric and his partner and they brought it to us. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, we got something just like it. Mm -hmm. And then it went on. I believe it's like Bounce's number one rated show. Mm -hmm. Like y'all can fact check, fact check that. Mm -hmm. But, so I think about that mm -hmm. one, but that's not my biggest regret. Mm -hmm. My biggest regret in this business is myself and Eric Thomasunas with Swirl Films. Mm -hmm. We had a conversation about what stand-up comedy special can we do next? Mm -hmm. At that time, I had just come from Urban Works, mm -hmm. which was Jeff Clanagan and Quincy Newell, and we had the Platinum Comedy Jeff. Series. Jeff used to work for Pete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's all yeah. it's all interconnected. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. So that so Jeff and Quincy gave mm -hmm. me my first job in film and TV. Okay. Right at Urban Works. So mm -hmm. we literally we had done the Platinum Comedy Series. We did Steve. We did Cedric. We did Monique. We did mm -hmm. Cheryl. We did Mike Epps, like mm -hmm. DL. We everybody, right? And, and we had also had, you know, um, some some Jamie stuff. We 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 tried Charlie Murphy. We did mm -hmm. all these things, right? But we was like, who's next? So me and Eric having this conversation, and we was like, yo, let's do Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. So her house is involved in this story. So, so. As her is Jasmine. Her is Jasmine, her is Jasmine. So we was like, okay. And, and, and we were like, yo, at the time, Kevin was the soul playing guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he had the great cameo in 40 Year Old Virgin, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> now, something that just happened to Kevin Hart that changed his stand up. Mm -hmm. So he started talking about his wife Mm -hmm. and his kids. Mm -hmm. That's where it shifted, right? Mm -hmm. So we saw a set and I was like, ooh. I said, that's really good. Mm -hmm. So we decided, so I was at Image Entertainment at the time. Mm -hmm. And so Garrett Lee and myself, we went and put the deal together and we shot and produced and financed Kevin's first stand-up special, I'm a Grown Little Man. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay? Okay. So um, we we... We did that, and then we pitched that special to Comedy Central. Mm -hmm. We was like, they was like, like, is there yeah. an audience? We was like, trust us, watch it. Right. They watched it, they loved it, they put it on, it overtook Cat Williams' Pimp Chronicles at mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. as the top rated comedy special. Mm -hmm. So everything's flowing along, but my company, at the time, Image Entertainment, we were up for sale. Mm. We owed Kevin like five hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. In the grand scheme of things, that's not a lot of money. Right. 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 Kevin's agent called me and said, "Brett, y'all owe us some money. I I, I need you. This is on a Monday. I need y'all to pay us by Friday." I'm going to sign with your competitor the following Monday. Mm. So I go to my CFO and I'm like, hey, I know the company is in the middle of a sale, but I just need you to cut mm -hmm. this 550 to Kev so we can keep them 
right? Boom, boom, boom. He was like, Brett, I can't let any money walk out the door. Our, our books are frozen until the sale goes through. I'm like, it's only five fifty though. Like, right. look, he's like, I can't do anything. So I call Kevin's agent back and I was like, hey, can I get an extension on that? I'm just waiting for this transaction to go through. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, nah, you have until Monday, well, Friday to pay for Monday morning, we're going to sign with your competitor. So I was at Image Entertainment, Jeff Clanagan, had started Cold Black Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Friday came and went. We did not pay Kevin the 550 because the books were frozen. On Monday, Kevin Hart signed a three picture deal with Cold Black Entertainment and Jeff Clanagan. Those three titles were seriously funny, Laugh at My Pain, and Let Me Explain. Wow. Do y'all understand how this interview would be different wow. if I had paid Kevin that 550000 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's okay, crazy. so I didn't pass. But you didn't pass. That's what I'm about to say. But you it's a pass, regret, yeah, that I couldn't control. Right. But yeah, no, that like, but but that's how this business is, right? right. Like you know, he took off. Yes, took yes. off, off, right? You know, mm -hmm. and so, but it's all good because everything happens for a reason. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> and you know, I just feel like if we could have paid him the money, like I would probably be on set with him in the rock. <laughs> <laughs> but you where you supposed to be right now. Exactly. You know exactly, what I mean? Cause exactly. you, you making things happen right now. Yeah. Um, how do you know when you have a, a a special piece of content? Like how do you know when, okay, this is good. Like I, we need that. So I'm gonna be honest with you. We, we, we throwing darts at the dartboard. Okay. Right? Like if we, if mm -hmm. we and, and, and I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Blind case study. If someone walked in your office and said, I am pitching you a movie about two guys that are unemployed, all they do is they sit on a porch all day, one day, <laughs> smoke weed, <laughs> and crack jokes on each other. Right. That's the premise. Yeah. You're passing on that project. Yeah. 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 Obviously, that was fine. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Watch yeah. this, though. If I came into your office and I said, hey, we're gonna do a movie with Denzel Washington, Forrest Whitaker, produced by Oprah Winfrey, right? Mm -hmm. It's gonna come out on Christmas Day. The whole <laughs> cast is gonna be on the Oprah Winfrey show to promote mm -hmm. the day before it comes out. You sign up for that every time, right? Mm -hmm. The great debater still hasn't made his money back. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow. In this business, it's hard yeah. to crazy. make a hit TV show. Right. It's hard to make a hit movie. It's hard yeah. to make a hit record. Yeah. You know, that's why people celebrate so much when they do have a hit because mm -hmm. it's so hard. Mm -hmm. Every every project you put out mm -hmm. only has a twenty five percent chance of becoming a hit. Mm. I don't care if it's music, TV, or film. So it's a volumes game. But we are in the volume business. Okay. Absolutely. Gotcha. We are going to throw as many yep. shows at you as possible, and we're hoping you're going to like a third right. of them. And a few will pay for those other ones that- Listen. <laughs> no. A few hits no, that, will that's pay a fact. for yeah. That's a fact. If, 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 if you finance and produce yeah. 10 movies, mm -hmm. you release all 10, mm -hmm. eight of them are going to bomb. Mm -hmm. But the profit from the two that work will cover. pay for the yeah. eight that bomb. So yeah. wait, I have a question. Yeah. So is this why sometimes I used sometimes to do that in some other stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it reminded God. me of something, but go ahead. <laughs> right, right. Uh, with trends, is this is why too when we see people like when they have the formula, like do you all lock in on the formula oh and keep just putting out, we like, why is it, this is like this or this is similar. It's like an era of this type of so, whatever. I'm, I'm gonna explain what that mm -hmm. is coming from an executive mm -hmm. that doesn't subscribe to this. Mm -hmm. Hollywood is a copycat business because everybody is afraid to lose their job. Okay, so yeah. if you see something that worked, four other companies will be mm -hmm. like, we're gonna go do that thing. Mm -hmm. It's not because they believe in that thing, it's because they love their bonuses. Mm -hmm. They they don't want to take their kids out of private school. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Like like these are facts. Yeah. This is not my yeah. opinion. Yeah, no, yeah. you know what I mean. And I get so, it. I get it. You know what I mean. And so yeah. when when the motivation is your paycheck, something is off there. I'm like, but but this is this is somebody who 
lives and breathes mm-hmm. creativity. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? And again, I keep saying film, TV, music, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like I get chills, mm-hmm. you know, when I hear certain notes and songs. Yeah. I get yeah. I cry mm-hmm. at certain like movies because I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. That 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 emotion, yeah. that caring about the stories that you're telling mm-hmm. and how are you capturing these yeah. skin complexions mm-hmm. and how are you handling mm-hmm. these hair textures and mm-hmm. how are you dealing with yeah. sizest society right. mm-hmm. and all ages and all of these things. Like mm-hmm. this is, this, we talk about every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. I've been at other places. That's not the conversation. The mm-hmm. conversation is what's going to make the most money exactly. and how quickly. So this is why we have like 50 Batmans <clears throat> and Correct. Supermans. And yeah. they wait, keep... wait. This is why every classic film is being remade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. They, they think, oh, there's already a built-in audience. Exactly. That is a safe bet safe, mm-hmm. for me to have this job for two more years. Let, let me ask you something. With you saying that and then me having this conversation with you understanding that you're, you're creative as well, yeah. <laughs> how, do you, how do you balance that? Because you like, 50% suit, 50% creative. Correct. How do you so balance that? So here's the thing. Consolidate that, I should say. I am in the unique position that I've been on both sides of the table mm-hmm. in TV and film and in music. Mm-hmm. I've been an artist. I've signed a record deal. Mm-hmm. I've worked at a label. I have been a product manager dealing with the people that have signed record deals. Mm-hmm. I have been a producer of independent content. I've been a casting director. I've been a music supervisor. Wow. You know, I've been a distributor. Mm-hmm. I've been now a network executive, right? And so I understand where both sides are are, are coming from. Mm-hmm. And and most of my counterparts don't have that. Exactly. They've done their one thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so, but but I'll tell you where that come from comes from. So Back when I was a college rep, this is way back in the day, um, Chuck D had a new solo project, right? And so I I was assigned to taking him around to the different colleges in LA um, to promote the album, but he was Mm -hmm. doing speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. And so in between, I think we were traveling from USC to UCLA, and he looked at me and he goes, Brother Brett, what do you want to do with your career? Now, mind you, I'm, I'm 19, mm-hmm. 20 years old. And I said, I want to be Barry Gordy. Mm-hmm. And he goes, why do you want to be Barry Gordy? I said, because Barry Gordy signed the music acts that he wanted to sign. He produced the movies that he wanted to produce. Mm-hmm. And he ran his own company. Chuck D looked at me that day and said, Brother Brett, rapping and singing, is one job in the music business. Uh, writing is another mm-hmm. job. Producing is a third job. Yep. He said, there are 85 other jobs in the music business. Go find out what those are, and then you can run your own business, and you can be Barry Gordy. Mm-hmm. And I took that. Mm-hmm. I took that mentality throughout my music industry career. I applied it to film and TV. I was like, yo, not only am I going to ask questions, I'm going to be like, yo, I gotta do that, yeah. right? Like, I've been on set as an actor, mm-hmm. right? So I am not a suit that's like, yo, you know, uh, yeah. uh, your turnaround time yeah. is X, right? <laughs> I get it, you need yeah. to go home and have a peace of mind, right. you see what I'm saying? Right. And like, right. you know, everybody can't understand mm-hmm. the thought process yeah. of the creative. right? You know what I mean? You like, having that, does that get yeah. in the way and sometimes cloud your judgment as an executive? I feel does like it, it makes you a little soft. I feel like you know it makes I, mean? I feel like as an executive. It, 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 little, it, little it, makes, it makes me more compassionate. Yes. That's the better word. Right. Compassionate. Like yes. because it's yeah. not just no. Right. Now, here's the thing. Once me and my team confer, if the best business decision is for the answer to be no, mm-hmm. 
we at least talked about it though. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a straight no. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, okay, well, do we factor that in? Do we factor that in? Yeah. And like, you know, do, do you, you try know what this means? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. We, we try to have a happy meeting. Oh, that's but dope. you know what I like that you tied in though? And I think this is something that a lot of people don't recognize or think about because we're, and not that it's their fault, but we're also focused on the creators and the actors, but we don't take into consideration that the people behind the scenes are also hustling. And worrying about the same thing, like man, I want to, I want to be here too next year, just right. like you, you Correct. know. And that's, oh. that that story doesn't get told enough. Listen, giving people opportunities, it is, it is a hundred percent fulfilling. Mm -hmm. It comes with baggage too, mm. and that is, as a network exec, going back to what I said earlier, you cannot satisfy. Mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. right so i just said we we get pitched 450 projects a year mm -hmm. we can only select two or three so of the 448 that did not get selected right a third of those are like oh i don't fuck with bread no more right right <laughs> right <laughs> let's start that's there true. yeah right yeah, and then right. another third are like oh the, the shows that they have on air those are garbage. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And they say they're garbage yeah. because it's not there. it's not theirs. Mm -hmm. They start hating. But yeah, yeah. If, I, if I call that same person, I'm like, yo, that show you pitched me? Oh, now y'all <laughs> yeah, do amazing yeah, yeah. work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. These, that's are, these are facts, right? No, that's real. So, you know, or... Especially us. Especially oh, our listen. people. Yeah. Yes. You, oh, you well, already know. I love it. You know, but, or, but, but, but you know, and then, but, but, but it, it goes deeper than that, right? Yeah. Because I have challenges that we have to face on a, on a, on a uh, uh, daily basis, like we have to create, so this is on the WeTV side now, right? Mm -hmm. We have to create content that advertisers want yep. to exactly. spend money on, right? Yep, yep. Watch this, our number one rated show is a show called Love After Lockup. Y'all heard about it? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows about this show. Listen. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on Brett. Ask it again. Oh, okay. Ask it again. <laughs> yeah. Ask it again. I'm about so, to ask you. So, so, so our number one rated show is a show called Love After Lockup. Have you oh, heard about yeah. it? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So listen. Right. So let me tell you. The premise, though, is there are people that enjoy finding inmates to date while they're in, and then That's once they thing. get out- Yes. What happens? They ghost them. That's what. No, 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 no. Well, well. That's in what real our, life, they what, ghost. Well, them. That's what our show is. Okay. We, we are following the people, showing what happens okay. when they get out. Does that happen? Some, some of them do get yeah. ghosted. Yes, yes, they do. yes. But, but it's craziness. Yes, that's right? a real thing. But yeah. watch this. Mm -hmm. Our number one rated show. Mm. Some advertisers don't want the smoke because of the content because it's dealing with the justice system. Uh. So again. It's wow. balance, wow. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, some, some, some companies love reality mm -hmm. shows. Mm -hmm. Some don't. Some mm -hmm. only want to put their money towards scripted, mm -hmm. right? But then when you get to scripted, then it's like, okay, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. Does this show have too much murder, mm -hmm. right? right? Now, here's the thing. We're desensitized, right. you know, That's to all right. this stuff, right? That's right. Now, what I don't understand is why are you questioning how many people died in my show, Double Cross, but 12 people died in the last episode of every show I watched on NBC. Exactly. Last, last you know, yes. Wednesday. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's a double standard. It is a double standard. It's a double standard. Yeah. So we realize all of this, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it's like, we are trying to create compelling mm -hmm. content mm -hmm. that the people want to see, yeah. that, Companies want to attach their brands to, <clears throat> and at the same time, give opportunities to writers, directors, yeah. producers. Yeah. In, 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 in my business, mm -hmm. a lot of times that look like us, mm -hmm. right? So that is giving people, new people opportunities, but that is also supporting our existing yeah. writers, directors, yeah. Yeah. actors, producers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so... You know, that's a lot of boxes to check. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of boxes. And that's a lot to of stress. How do you keep your stress level managed? Or you, you, you know what I mean? Because that's a lot. That's a lot of pressure. I'm. A, I'm a, okay. Listen, I'm. I'm about to say really unsaid today. I sleep very well at night mm -hmm. because I'm honest with myself first, mm -hmm. 
Mm. And I'm honest with everybody I do business with. I'm not here yeah. to be a yes person. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. That's right. I'm not doing uh, kickbacks. Yeah. I'm not, like, no, yeah. real talk. Because yeah. here's the thing. If everything is above board and we're having honest conversation, yeah. right. I can breathe easy. Exactly. I'm not looking over my shoulder, yeah. whether that is So you're moving with relative integrity. Or mm -hmm. yeah. that's, the only, integrity. that's the only way. Because yeah. I know that I know where my heart is mm -hmm. when we're making these decisions. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the only way to to keep the focus yeah. on not letting, you know, mm -hmm. all of the noise drive I you guess crazy. when I say stress, um, I guess just because you want to do good, right? For instance, yeah. like you just said, all of these boxes you got to check and not wanting to miss the mark. Yeah. It's like, it's a great piece of content. It'll do well. They'll like it, but the advertisers might like it. This is good. The advertisers might like it, right. but the people mm -hmm. might not like right. it. But if the people don't like it and the <laughs> audience is not there, then they're not going to. You see, it's a constant mind. Well, so. well, okay. Let's talk about this. If you look at the last 10 years of films that won Best Picture for the Oscars, mm -hmm. I would probably argue one of those 10 mm -hmm. also made a lot of money. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's yeah. a fine line between art and commerce in our business. This is true. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the 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 titles that get the best reviews, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the best word of mouth. And they're like, oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah. Those are considered Art house, art house, or yeah. genre. When I hear art house, right? I always think failure in terms <laughs> but, well, of money being made. But, but that's in terms of the commerce, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So, but but if you want to make money, oh, mm -hmm. go blow up some cars, yeah, that's and right. And shoot some people, that's right. And oh, we and we and we some good. sex, you know, you, some, but, but yeah, some see what I'm saying? Shit, yeah. And so <laughs> we we are constantly, you know, walking that line. Mm -hmm. We're constantly mm -hmm. walking that line. So, um, yes, it's it's, it's a Speaking daily battle. Of the line, so. The strike. Yeah. Um, what what uh, with with that? <laughs> I saw I saw the picket line. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With that right line, yeah. I mean, you having a the position that you have, and again, as you said, being on both sides. Yeah. Um, how did how does the strike? How did it affect you? You know, mm. and how does it affect you moving forward? Well, let let me say this. So, number one, I I want everyone doing work to feel like they are appreciated and they are compensated fairly, mm -hmm. right? Like, because that is the foundation of us having great shoots. Mm -hmm. That's right. If, if, if half the people that show up to work feel underpaid and underappreciated- it's begrudging, it's gonna resonate, it, it shows It like resonates yeah. in, in yep. the material, yep. right? And, and everything else. And so, yep. So I, I want the actors, the writers, everybody that went on strike, I, I want everybody to be happy. Um, there is also a, a business line of it that I don't know if everybody understood what was being argued, mm -hmm. okay? So you asked how did it affect us? We had to postpone a number of shows, mm -hmm. right? that were supposed to be shooting this year, mm -hmm. we had to postpone them till next year, right? Not knowing when the strike was gonna be over, right? Um, but here's the thing, so networks had an option. You could postpone or you could cancel, right? And people say, well, why would you cancel shows? Like you greenlit them, you really wanted to do them. Well, <clears throat> if I green light these four shows, and I'm postponing them to shoot next year, mm -hmm. then that means the shows that we're going to shoot next year now got pushed to the following year. Mm -hmm. So you're moving your whole slate. Mm -hmm. So when, when we see things that like the next Avatar is not going to get shot now until 2030. Y'all heard that, right? Oh, shit. But see what I'm saying? 30. They don't understand Damn. the snowball effect of it, wow. right? So some networks, instead of pushing out your whole slate, mm -hmm. you was like, okay, well, we just gonna cancel these and we're gonna start fresh here so that we're not moving stuff out. But, but, um, but there were, there were a couple things at play. Mm -hmm. um, 
like, I want to talk about AI for a second. I was going to go. That was my next well, question. But go ahead. Well, go I, I want to talk about think? AI because people don't acknowledge that AI is a part of their daily lives. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. So I'm going to use a music analogy. And, and don't quote me on these years, but y'all going to get the mm -hmm. point. In 1978, if you wanted to record a song, mm -hmm. you had to go to a studio. Yep. You had to hire all the musicians. Yep. You had to hire the background singers, engineers, the engineer, yep. all that. Yep. A lot of people got paid, right? Mm -hmm. Six years later in 1983, you could do all of that in your room by yourself. You could- I don't think it was 83. I said, don't quote me on yeah. the year, right? right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying yeah. is- I know I'm when saying, it was, it was about 96. No, 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 no. no. Wait, so Steve, Steve, Stevie, wasn't doing all but, synthetic but instruments in no, the 80s. No, he was, but he had he still had reel to reel. He okay. still had to someone to run it. Okay. But when they started with Cakewalk, which was a precursor to right. uh what what is it uh that everybody uses? Anyway, when you could do it on a computer. Right. It, yes. But but, but the point is, mm -hmm. you know, the background singers, yes. you could be in your room. You could stack, you could stack all it. the vocals yes, yourself. You could. Yes. You yes. could mix it yourself. Yep, you, could. you could play every instrument. With a drum machine, a drum and a machine, and a yep, a sequencer now, or, or yeah. a sequencer, right? <laughs> yeah. So now here's yeah. the thing: that's AI. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so to try to hold on to something and say, "Hey, we should not replace anything with AI," is unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Now, I do agree that. No one should have their name and likeness used mm -hmm. without their permission and or compensation. Yes. But I watch agree. this. You have to get people's permission currently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as, as we're negotiating mm -hmm. the, these new deals, yeah. it's not reverting back yeah. to worse than what's mm -hmm. currently. Mm -hmm. I can't film you mm -hmm. and use it without having a release. Right. 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 And and on that release, it's going to say if mm -hmm. you're getting paid or not. Right. If you choose to make it gratis, mm -hmm. that's on you. Right. Exactly. So on and so forth. So th those uh um uh standards are mm -hmm. already in place. Right. So I mm -hmm. felt like it was a scare tactic to be like, oh, they're gonna use your name and likeness and not pay you. Yeah. And and, and wait, and not get your permission. Yeah. That's not how it works. But anyway, so. What about the writers? Now, let, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. So, <laughs> listen. Listen. My writer friends are going to be mad at this. But it does not take 12 writers to come up with a concept. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> because here's, here's the business of it. The yeah. business of it is how do we make the money work for us better? Mm-hmm. Right? And so, yeah. if I can have a writer's room with six writers instead of 12, mm -hmm. that's good business. Right. Absolutely. That's all we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. the same thing as the musicians. Exactly. It's the same thing as, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm not saying replace the writers mm -hmm. because, because here's the thing. Even if I decided I wanted to type in, you know, a scenario, uh, young black dude growing up on the south side of Chicago, and he played baseball. Mm -hmm. I could type that in, and it's going to print out a, a script, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still need to now give that script to writers. Yes. Mm -hmm. to, to whether they're punching it up, mm -hmm. whether they are correcting it, whether they are, you know, reformatting it. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if you're going straight from the AI-generated script mm -hmm. to it's not going to set, yeah, mm -hmm. that that business ain't gonna be around long. Nah, anyway. nah, that's crazy. You know what I mean? So that's crazy. So so you know so, <clears throat> but we we have to embrace mm -hmm. technology. Yes, you know because you know we walking around with these tracking devices exactly. on your lap right now. <laughs> Do you feel like AI is more of a threat than 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 an aid or something that will actually contribute to the business? I think. I think anyone who thinks their job may be in jeopardy, looks at something as a threat. Mm -hmm. But it's all about perspective. Right. Right? right. So for me, 
And and I have been told I'm a supreme optimist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the glass is always half full to me. Mm-hmm. You know, and so if I have a business and I used to hire a security guard to sit mm-hmm. at the front door mm-hmm. and I replaced that security guard with a camera, I didn't reduce my overhead because I still have to hire a person to mm-hmm. sit back there and watch the monitors. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's perspective. Yeah. You're ju- we're just mm-hmm. moving the money around. Right. We're not eliminating anybody. That's my yeah. perspective. Well, do you yeah. think it'll make it more competitive now? Because like you said, no longer 12 writers, for example. Now it's six. So will he, do you think it'll just be, I guess the criteria would be different now for certain behind the scenes You know what? I think, I think it depends on the budget of mm-hmm. the show. Okay. Because here's the thing, all shows aren't created equal. That's right. Say, right. That's right. So if you're on a show that, and y'all, you know, six million an episode, mm-hmm. that writer's room looks a lot different. That's right. Than yeah. if you're yeah. doing 75,000 yeah, yeah, episodes. Right. That's like, right. ain't no writer's room. <laughs> that's right. You're like, here's the script. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know that's what I'm saying? Real. Take it as that's it real. is. On you a know, notebook pay, on notebook yeah, paper. <laughs> for real. So, so, you know, so, so again, it's, it's, it's yeah. relative. Yeah. It's relative. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and, um, um, but that, but that's everything in mm-hmm. our business, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you have a budget for a film that's five hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars or a hundred million, the same hours and work go into making those projects, mm-hmm. no matter how much money you spent. Wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So wow. yeah. So I mean, where's it, the money going? <laughs> <laughs> Let me. T- well, listen. <laughs> so obviously, the, the, the higher up, yeah, you know, the higher up you go the more money that goes into the pockets of the people involved, I got involved, you. right? Got you. So, okay. you know, um, you know, at the end of the day, and, and people should learn from the music business, mm-hmm. this is a high risk, high reward industry, Yep. right? Which means it's a lot of money to be made it's also a lot of, of risks risk that you're take. taking. Yep. And so when you take that risk, you're going to have movies that bomb. You're going to have yep. TV shows that bomb. You're yep. going to have albums that flop, right? Uh-huh. But, you know, for, yeah, every, for every hit, like, you, you live. You that's live right. to fight another right. day. No. <laughs> uh, you know what? I want to ask you, I wanna, I'm going to wrap it up soon, but I want to yeah. ask you, like, what developments are you most proud of uh, in terms of black content? that have taken place in the, maybe the last 10 years? So I have to, I have to say this. So, and, and I know I'm gonna sound like a homer, but I am really most proud of the slate that we are now offering on All Black and We TV mm-hmm. because we pride ourselves on diverse, you know, series and mm-hmm. films and and genres, right? And so on the all black side, whether it's feature films, whether it is uh, original series, a choir series, we do short films, we mm-hmm. do stage plays, we do documentaries, right? Most of my contemporaries focus on one or two mm-hmm. things, mm-hmm. right? Black people, we are not a monolith. That's right. You know what I mean? And so, you know, shout out to the companies that say, I just want to do this or I just want to do this. But when you walk in the door at All Black, it's about an experience, Mm -hmm. right? So you're going to see the fraternal twins and double cross Mm -hmm. taking down sex trafficking rings, right? You're going to see the first show ever about black witches, Wicked mm-hmm. City. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you, you're gonna okay. see, you, yeah. see, see, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. you're, and and yes. you're like, yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but it's like, it's like, you know, we have an opportunity yeah. to, to really push the envelope mm-hmm. on the stories that we're telling, mm-hmm. you know? And so, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, listen, Matt Barnes and his wife, Ananza Sims, 
Shout you know, to Matt, Matt Barnes, who's been to the show. He's listen, a friend of the show. So yeah. we got a show with mm-hmm. their family coming on nice. TV. Nice. Y'all gonna love that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. The Barnes Bunch. You know, um, there are a bunch of things that that we have in the works that mm-hmm. we're really. Um, you still got uh, what's it called? Windy City. Is that what it is? Cold, cold and windy. Cold and windy. Cold and windy. Okay. Cold and windy. Yep. Uh, season two is coming next year. Mm-hmm. Um, no, <laughs> but <laughs> no, yes. no, but no, but but cold and windy. And, and 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 here's the thing, right? So we see a lot of. So we're going back to what you said about female MCs. Mm-hmm. Cold and windy is about two female drill rappers. <laughs> From the south side of Chicago, yeah. that hit licks when they're not in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Craziness. Who, by Craziness. the way, Jasmine, you you were featured in that. Jasmine Lewis, yeah, who was here in hitting the licks. <laughs> yeah, hitting. You know licks. what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? But but it's like it's like like it's okay for us mm-hmm. to lose ourselves in in the in the adventure mm-hmm. in the in the fantasy, right? Right. right. And so because I mm-hmm. think. I think a lot of people initially, because of all the negative stereotypes Mm -hmm. that were portrayed, they only wanted to see, you know, Mm -hmm. the positive story. Right. That's not our experience, Mm -hmm. though, right? Exactly. But as long as we are giving you Mm -hmm. a full spectrum. The balance, yes. The balance. The balance is You know what I mean? Yeah. So so we can have cold Mm -hmm. and windy. That's right. Hitting licks and rapping. Yep. You know, uh, uh, but, you know, but at the same time, in, in a house divided, you have yeah. mm-hmm. a black family mm-hmm. that has had money for five generations, mm-hmm. and 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 they're doing things that the Carringtons couldn't do. Right. <laughs> Shout out to right. Dynasty, right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you, you know, and, and, and right, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But but and everything in between, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah. So I'm 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 most happy with the diversity. Mm-hmm. Yes. Of of the content that, right. that we're offering is that same diversity um, shared in your seat as a general as a GM with these entities and these networks? Is it diverse? You're saying my counterparts yes. at other networks? Yes. No. Okay. No. So we still got work to do there. Well, listen, listen. Yes, yes. Okay. No. Um, diversifying the rooms that control yes. the money and the content yes. is still still working a on task. It. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know gotcha. you know what I'm saying? And and yeah. so um <clears throat> you know I'm one of few. Right. You know, right. I'm one of few black people in all of black Hollywood. And I don't care what the 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 budget level is, mm-hmm. I'm one of few that can actually green light mm-hmm. a show. Right. Yeah, like think exactly. About that. Like it's that's why I wanted to bring you here oh. and celebrate you because mm-hmm. you, you are. I appreciate that. That's exactly what. That's exactly the reason. Yeah. Um, I ask you one, one, one last question. Um, being from Chicago and the environment that you came from, mm-hmm. it's a two, two part question. Um, do you ever, do you ever go through survivor's remorse? And yeah. Um, was it all that you thought it was going to be once you got here? So the answer to your first question is I go through survivor's remorse every day. Mm-hmm. You know, I appreciate uh, the life, the lifestyle, the mm-hmm. blessing of what I do for a living, mm-hmm. right? We're not sending people to the moon. We're not mm-hmm. curing cancer. Mm-hmm. We are telling stories and we're having fun mm-hmm. doing it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I, I, I could think of, worst things that I could be doing, right. right? But here's 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 the thing about why I feel it every day. Um I'm still connected mm-hmm. to not only my community, yep. I'm still friends with people yep. that I started in second grade with. Same with me. And high school yep. and, and the whole nine, right? Yep. And so um you know, when I say, "Hey, you know, mm-hmm. I'm flying down to Vegas to go see New Edition. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be back tomorrow for the New Edition show here. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing this and that and that. And knowing that they can't roll like that. Exactly. Whole different life. You exactly. know what I do? Yeah. I'll be like, yo, you, you want to go? Yep. 
right? Yeah. But here's the but here's here's the fine line, right? You cannot save the whole Mm-mm. that's right you can't. whole neighborhood. You can't. Everybody can't go. Everybody mm-hmm. can't go, right? Yeah. And and you have to decide because I can hang with you, mm-hmm. but then everybody can't hang with me though. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. um so. I, I deal with that. Mm-hmm. Then um, there is a burden. Um, there is a burden on my heart every day with the stories that we green light. Mm-hmm. Because I feel a responsibility to my people. Mm-hmm. Yep. You have the burden of culture. You got to represent. Mm-hmm. You, you, you understand what yeah. I'm saying? And so, yeah. and so, you know, if we make a decision to do a certain thing, I literally, the very next question is, okay, so if we do that here, where are we going to do this, mm-hmm. which is on the other side of the spectrum? That's right. Right? Yep. And then we're playing in between that, mm-hmm. you know, all day. Um, you know, and uh, and I will also say this. So look. Um, a lot of, a lot of people that I meet here in LA who don't know me from Chicago, Mm -hmm. they're like, oh, Brett lives in the suburbs, Mm -hmm. you know, Brett, you know, gets his clothes dry clean. Mm -hmm. Those things are true. Yeah. But cheese grits are still my favorite food. (laughs) That's right. You understand what I'm saying? (laughs) Listen, let me tell you something. Where I'm from, this is called wine candy. Yeah. <laughs> now, we don't say Jolly Ranchers. We say wine candy. I still walk around oh, with wine man, candy in my bro, pocket. My you feelings just start hurting just <laughs> looking at that thing. Hey, but, 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 you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm scared for, to eat that now. For me, yeah. I do not see myself I got as any different mm. than the kid that grew up on 91st and Merrill. That's right. Despite how other people yeah. view me, yeah. whether it's in my own company, mm-hmm. whether I'm sitting on a panel, whether mm-hmm. you know I'm on TV, it does. Yeah, that's you, dope. you know what I mean. Yeah. So, and so, um, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a lot to care. That's dope. So you remain in a space of gratitude. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. That's dope. You need to switch that for a now later, bro. <laughs> no, no, because you <laughs> eventually got to chew a now later. Now later, you don't bro. chew. Yeah, <laughs> you don't. Now later is the real golden hood candy. You wait, know wait, what I mean? mystery mix. <laughs> nah, pineapple. Uh, oh, you can't do pineapple, the yellow pineapple oh, and you grape. Do, if grape. You, I was going to say you got to do grape and apple. If you had apple, because you was everybody's friend when you had the now not, not later, because when you ate them, people could right. smell them and they'd be like, "Who got candy?" <laughs> no, let me tell you. No, I'm gonna say in my hood, uh huh. You open up the grab bag of Doritos, mm-hmm. and you get the nacho cheese. Put the cheese on top. Oh yeah, yeah. Walk, they don't listen, do that no more. Hey, 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 everybody no be more. like, "Cop, cop." <laughs> I don't know if you don't know what cop is, but um, and remember they, I want some. And remember they had the Doritos with the uh, clear. It was clear. You could see it had the little circle. With the, the little circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, Old school, the, man. Listen. Old school. Real quick. Yeah. Top five rappers. Top five rappers. Yeah. Um, Jay, Eminem, and this is no in particular order. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, Wayne, mm-hmm. LL Cool J, mm-hmm. Lady Ray. Okay, top five R and B solo, male or female? Male. Luther. Mm-hmm. Um. Brian. Okay. I know that hurt me. That hurt me. <laughs> Listen, he having so many problems with the family. Like, come on, look, I, I know. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't. <laughs> Kevin Edmonds. Okay. Yeah, he's dope. Um, uh, Stokely from New Edition. I mean, uh, uh, from Mint Condition. Mint Condition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Wanya Morris. Okay, that's different. That's a different yeah. type of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I'm different. Real maturity, <laughs> real maturity is accepting that Freddie Jackson is just as dope as Luther Vandross. That's real maturity. Just as dope? Yeah. Okay, you know what? No, 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 no. F- Freddie, Freddie was the business. Uh huh. But but I'm gonna tell you in that era. Let me tell you who people sleep on from that era. I already know who you're gonna say. Who? Alexander O'Neill. Nope. Who? Glenn Jones. Glenn Jones. Show Ooh, me. Come on, what? bro. Come but on. But I'm just. 
<laughs> Come on. But I'm just saying, I'm saying, listen, do yourself a favor, yeah. go home, say, play the best of Glenn Jones. I'm already up on and, it. And, 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 and see when they stop. Like, it's crazy. Random question. Yeah. The Wire mm. or Power? <sighs> Why you do that to him? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Because power, power is a universe. Which I know. power? I, uh, oh. Pick it, either one. Because the wire is the wire. No, no, no. I know. I got you. I got you. I will say this. So if I go OG power, mm -hmm. I'm going to say the wire. Okay. I'm going to say the wire. I'm going to take Raising Canaan, though, over the wire. Really? What? Was good. So hold on. Power book three. Yeah. Raising Canaan. That's, that's, that's my. So Marlo Stansfield. Or Canaan. Or Canaan. Marlo. 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 Marlo is Marlo. a G. Yeah, 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 yeah. Marlo's my favorite gangster. I'm, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I, I'm also taking Avon Barksdale over Canaan as well. Okay, yeah. I'm, I can I'm go saying, with that. But I can go with that. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you know what? I cannot forgive Canaan mm -hmm. for what he did. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which part so of what he did? What well, he did I mean, do. well, what he first did of all, do. killing his own exactly. son. Exactly. Okay. I mean, that's yeah, what yeah. kicked yes. We was yeah. like, we was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We, uh, nah, yeah. You, we, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in Raising Canaan, we're finding out mm. how he became this way. Yeah, yeah. And Rock, the mom, and all that. Like, yeah. that's like, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I like Rock. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It's, <laughs> yeah. The, the, whole, yeah. the whole element of the, the family dynamic uh -huh. is crazy yeah. in that show. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, bro. Well, listen, man, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, man. Brett, I appreciate Thank you coming, my brother. And yes, we just indeed. wanted to give you your flowers. You know, continue doing the good work that you're doing, my brother. We Thank need you. more of you in that position, you know. Um, I agree. And yeah, 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 you know what I mean? And especially you coming from the culture, being of the culture and representing the culture correctly and not losing your way, you yeah. know, still being rooted in, yeah. in, in integrity and what's real, you right. know what I mean? So I appreciate you. So I got one more thing to say. Yes, sir. A Little Piece of Heaven starring Court and Jasmine is coming all black in 2024. Oh, yeah. Ah. Ah. Oh, yeah. Ah. I, did. Wait, what? I forgot about ah. that. So, yeah, See? yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah hey, yeah. so, yeah. So, yeah, I'm yeah. in the movie, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> starring Jasmine Lewis and Travis Cure. That song, is it all black? You say all it's black? Gonna, it's going to be on all black okay. coming in All black in 2024. I forgot to plug my own shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, shout out. We appreciate that too, man. For sure. Have you seen it? Absolutely. Okay. Did you see me do my thing? <laughs> I did. Wait, is this where I, you cried? Yeah, this is oh, where I cried. Oh, did this you cry? Oh, oh, listen. Oh, hold I on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just thought about something though. Yeah. The funny thing about it. I had this shirt on in the movie. Oh. <laughs> I did, right? <laughs> I just remembered that. I had this shirt on there in the movie. I did, I yes. did, I did. Yes, yes. Hey, so yeah. yeah. I can't believe what you did at the end of the movie, though, but we're going to let them what see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait you know till I remember. Oh, okay. real see, mature <laughs> grown stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, I did. That's right, that's right. It's all good, it's all good. Hey, yeah. well, man, it's a pleasure, brother. We had to do this again. Absolutely. You know, so I appreciate you, brother. So my daughter, Rachel yeah, yeah. Renee, Big Court. Yes. Brett Dismute, man. Yes, indeed. Thank you, brother. Salute, brother. Oh.